let's talk about what to do as a first assistant and a surgeon if you're running into bleeding. First of all, don't panic because you're no good to anyone if you're panicking. You have to keep things in, in control. Sometimes if you're doing an open case or laparoscopic case and you get into bleeding, obviously the first thing you want to do is try to stop the bleeding. But sometimes when you start working on the bleeding and the more you try to stop it, the more it keeps bleeding. And after this going on for a little while, you realize it's not going to stop and you need to do something to intervene. So usually what the surgeon will do in that situation is he will pack it away, put some pressure and pack it. And what that does is that helps seclude it and it gives it a chance to either stop completely or for it to slow down enough that later on you go back and remove that packing and then you can see where the bleeding is and you can pinpoint it and you can take care of it. So let's talk about the laparoscopic. If you have a, a bleed that occurs, especially if it's a um, an arterial bleed, you want to make sure you keep that scope out of the splash zone because that's the least last time you want to have this, the scope get bloody and then you have to pull it out because you can't see and there's bleeding in there. So make sure you keep it back far enough that the blood is not going to hit that the uh, scope. You can grasp the bleeder, the surgeon, or you may be grasp the bleeder temporarily while they get the hemoclip or the harmonic or the ligature or whatever they're using for it. You can grasp that to control it. If you're doing laparoscopic, you have the light that's shining in there. So what that does is it helps you pinpoint the bleeding a lot of times. If you have the light that's shining off liquid and you know what it does on the water, it has the liquid reflections. And as they move, you can see on the water, the light playing off the movement of the water. Well, you kind of have a similar thing with the blood is that when you have an ooze, say what, you have a venous ooze, that little bit of movement of that oozing bleeder will catch a little point of light and you'll be able to see that that's the source of it. It's a lot easier sometimes on a, an arterial bleed that's hidden to see that little, with the little pumping of the artery, you'll get a little, little strobe effect. And you, when you see that little strobe, the little blinking light, then you know that that's the source of where the bleeding is. So that's helpful when you're doing laparoscopic. Even in laparoscopic, they may put in a Raytec or they may pack, at, pack it, usually with a Raytec because that's what you get through, get through the port. And they may pack it. They may put Surgicel under the packing or snow or some other hemostatic agent and then pack it. Or they'll pack it and then come back later and take care of the bleeding. Another option that you have with the venous bleed is that the surgeon may temporarily raise the pressure of the insufflation up to 20-25 to help stop that bleeding, the venous bleeding. The only thing with that is, and then as he controls the, the bleeding and the ooze subsides, he's going to be able to take care of things again. It will slow down. And then later on, they will, as soon as they're possible, they will lower that pressure again and then see if it's going to restart bleeding. But when the pressure's up, they just have to be careful how long it's up because you don't want the, the pressure higher than the capillary refill because it will affect the end organs like the kidney uh, perfusion. So they're going to keep it the pressure up higher for as short amount of time as necessary to control the bleeding and take care of it. When you have the irrigator and you're irrigating off something that's bleeding, you actually have control of the the volume of the stream and the force of the stream by how hard you push down that button. So you're going to push a button hard if you want to actually completely wash off the area. But if you just want to do a little one to see if there's an ooze and you don't want to disrupt everything or possibly squirt off the scab, you do just a, a lighter one and then that could just bathe the area. Another thing that you're going to see in open and in laparoscopic sometimes is they will flood the area with irrigation and then they will slowly suck out the irrigation because as they get down to near where the source of the bleeding is, this is if they can't find it, then you'll see a little tiny stream of orangey red and the orangey red is fresh bleeding as opposed to that dark maroon color of bleeding that's older. 
So they'll get down and they'll just suck down slowly till they see that little stream and then that will help them localize the bleeding. So there are lots of ways that you can actually check for bleeding and things that you can do to take care of it.